Last time I explored the possibility of computing pixel coverage for a circle intersecting with a pixel box. And it did actually start working out. So that has the benefit that now I know what it looks like when you get really good computations on how much of a circle is touching a pixel. And it, it looks pretty good. And that gives me a good baseline for what this thing could look like. But I think the computations definitely got complicated enough that doing them for every sample when I go to do sampling along the motion vector of motion, uh, it's, you know, like there's about four uh, square roots in there for each box, and there's one box for each sample along the vector. So that's not great, and I think it's just too much, you know, there's a lot of complex stuff in there. It's kind of too much to ask, and I didn't even get to the part where I did, you know, rounded corners on a rectangle, which would further complicate the computations. And I, on top of that, need to do outlines, which would mean doing all of that twice whenever there's an outline to subtract out a certain amount of area and so on and so on, right? There's a lot of problems with going that direction. And I just don't see, no matter how much I like polish the details, I don't see it getting much better. And I don't think it's good enough in terms of the compute cost. So now I'm gonna try sine distance functions. I should be able to compare the sine distance function I write here to both the circle and the rectangle pixel coverage cases that I've already written. And that way I can get an idea of how good the sine distance functions should be in terms of how they anti-alias by comparing those. Let's take a look. All right, that's looking good. I managed to get it to pretty much exactly match the test I have from the pixel coverage version of rectangles. I'm obviously not doing any velocity-based anti-aliasing yet, so I'm comparing it against the version that's not velocity-based, but those are pretty much identical. So when I have just a clear, straight, plain rectangle with no rounding, and it's aligned to at least one of the coordinate axes, but maybe not the other one. So for instance, when my line segment's sliding back and forth left to right, its Y coordinate is exactly snapped to an integer. So the distance from the rectangle, and uh, when I use a linear interpolation on that to pick the uh, opacity of the pixel, when I use that for the anti-aliasing, I can compute the exact same value as I get for pixel coverage with a rectangle. Now, I think if I were to use uh, an offset that was, you know, a half pixel offset in both directions or a quarter pixel offset in both directions, something like that, I could then uh, sort of demonstrate that it's not the same computation. It, the pixel coverage would be able to handle the fact that, you know, sometimes the X part might be very close in covering the whole thing, but the same distance can also occur uh, you know, to the center of the pixel, even when half as much of the pixel is being covered because the Y coordinate also happens to be sort of cutting off some of that pixel, right? So I can't get it to exactly recreate those pixel coverages, but for sliding back and forth, it's the same exactly. And so that means that when I go to do the sampling along the vector of motion, it should be able to turn out the exact same results as long as it's snapped to one of those two coordinates. And I think probably 
the difference that is caused by it being not snapped on either coordinate while it's moving won't be so bad. Uh, it's, you know, it's just a blurring effect. It being slightly blurred more or less in certain circumstances isn't going to matter because it's while it's animating anyway, it's going to come to rest and look the same. So that should be a good starting step. I want to go and look at the circle too and make sure that the anti-aliasing looks nice on a circle because if it looks nice on a circle, then it's going to look nice on a rounded rectangle too. And by the way, while I was working on that, I think I might have cracked one of the things that was making my anti-aliasing not look as good before, which is that I was using the smooth step function in GLSL and that was not doing a linear uninterpolation, which is how I in my head was sort of pretending it worked. I think at some point I knew clearly while I was writing that that's not what it does, but then I started using it as just unlerp, which is not what it does. Uh, the smooth step, if I remember correctly, does like a cubic where it sort of smoothly changes from zero to one in a sort of curvy way. And it does not just create a nice linear uninterpolation between zero and one over some range, which is what I actually want for this case. And so in the past, I was like fiddling with that, that softness variable, trying to figure out where it should be to make it look good. And it wasn't quite making sense why I couldn't make it look good. The, the thing that does make sense is that you just do a straight linear uninterpolate from the range of 0 0.5 to negative 0 0.5 on that distance response curve. And that should be good. And uh, that's what it looks like now. And that is matching exactly the pixel coverage, as I was saying. So fixing that is probably one of those things that I was putting in there that was making the results harder to get right before. And now that it's fixed, I think I'm making progress towards getting the sine distance function to be a viable option. So that's just sort of to demonstrate the value of testing the actual results I'm getting against sort of a gold standard like pixel coverage, which is what I've been working on for all the previous videos and now it's starting to pay off. So let's go try that again, same process, comparing sine distance function against the gold standard pixel coverage version of a circle. I spent quite a bit of time there comparing two different rendering paths for the circles. One of the rendering paths uh, was the pixel coverage version of their circle renderer, and the other one was the new one, the sine distance function renderer. I wanted to be able to compare these sort of visually side by side because there's no reason with sine distance functions to expect it to make a very accurate estimate of the pixel coverage. So the pixel coverage is pretty much the right way to color a pixel. It's not perfect, it still has some issues, but it's basically that's the gold standard that the 
sine distance function is approximating, but it's approximating it by just taking the distance from the center of the pixel to the edge of the shape and then in, uninterpolating that in a linear way. So there's no actual reason why that should be a good uh, estimate. In fact, it can get arbitrarily bad for arbitrary shapes. Now for circles, it's not going to get arbitrarily bad, but I wanted to see how bad it would get. And so I did some rearrangement of the test code I already had. It was already sort of nicely bucketed, but I didn't have it pulled out into functions that I could rearrange without breaking the first test. So I wanted to keep the first test intact so that I can keep using it. But I also wanted to use the pieces from that test to assemble them into a new test. So I went through and sort of carefully factored out things that generate test geometry, things that transform those test geometry, things that render the test geometry, and then things that visualize the like zoomed in pixely version of things. And of course the, the dumper for the buffer as well that I get from that zoom in. So taking all those pieces and pulling them out into functions and that I was able to rearrange them into this comparison version of the test so that I could look at two different renderers for the circle side by side. And by looking at them side by side, I was pretty well convinced that the version for sine distance functions was a little bit less good looking. It, basically the test I did was I stared at it for a bit, wasn't I managed to not remember which side I had put each one on, and picked one left or right that I thought looked not as good, and then I went back and checked and sure enough the one that I said in my head was not as good was the sine distance function one. Maybe not a, maybe not a perfectly valid test, but I'm pretty confident that the one that looked more aliased was in fact the sine distance function one. So. I then decided to go and look at how much error that actually was, precisely numerically how much error that was. And it's not an insignificant amount. The error was 20 out of 255, so almost 10%, uh, a little less than 10%, but you know, still quite a significant amount. It'd be like going into a hex code and adding uh, a, a one digit to the, the the larger significant one plus four more to the bottom one. Right? It's it's a big step up in the strength of a color to step up by twenty out of two hundred fifty five points. So. It could be that I need to figure out some way to tune it a little better to make it look. Uh, more like the pixel coverage version, but it's not so bad that I think it's a huge problem. I could live with it, and this is also not the most important problem. So while I'm going to note this as something we could spend some time on, I'm also going to note this as something we could accept as it is. It's an opportunity if there's free time and an easy oper like a, uh, opening along the way to explore a little further and see if we can get it better. The more important thing that we don't have yet is velocity smoothing, and that might also help with this anyway. So before I do anything to make these circles look better this way, I want to pause here. I think this is a good stopping spot. And next time I will try to add in sampling along the vector of motion so that I can get the thin line case looking good like it did in the pixel coverage version and see how that looks in the circle case too. And I think that that will help with the circle case some amount. It might not. And we'll have to look that look at that and see what's going on there. See if this is a nice universal path. I think if that part works out, there's a lot, um, a lot less open questions, you know, once once we've determined that the sampling along the vector is going to work on the sine distance function, I think the rest of this just becomes trying out all the rest of the features and then porting this new knowledge where we've cleaned up a few of the mistakes from the first pass and we've got this one new idea to help with the, the slow moving thin lines. So I think that'll be enough to transfer all of this back into the code base and see if it solves the thing that originally got us on this path of, of investigating OpenGL and the anti-aliasing problem more. But we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. We still have to do that next experiment, which is seeing how this all looks when I try sampling along the vector of motion, which is what we'll do next time. See you then.